Hello everyone. Today we'll be looking into numbers and counting. So from that itself, you can realize that it is gonna be a very important lesson. But of course, it is uh, pretty simple um, if you get a bit of uh, practice because it is pretty logical. And you can find this lesson in page number 52 of the material given in the description box. So going into our lesson, we have two number systems in Korean. One is Sino-Korean and one is Native Korean. You could realize what means what pretty much from the names. Um, and if you don't, of course, I am going to explain. So Sino-Korean numerals are derived from Chinese and you could say that it is uh, the remnants of a time when Chinese and the culture and the language was a lot more involved in uh, Korean, the country and the culture language, of course. Um, as for native Korean numerals, as the name indicates, it is completely Korean, it has completely Korean notes origins. And Sino-Korean and Native Korean numerals are used for different purposes. So we'll be seeing what those purposes are. Sino-Korean numerals are usually used to indicate dates, minutes, prices and age. And Native Korean numerals are usually used to count stuff and native Korean is also used to denote age and hours. That is, Sino Korean comes for minutes and native Korean comes for hours. So, from this, uh, I hope you understand that when you are saying the time, both native Korean and Sino Korean numerals are involved at the same time. So if you want to say the time fluently in Korean, you need to be adept with both Sino-Korean and Native Korean numerals. As for Sino-Korean numerals, um, it is easier than Native Korean numerals actually. Um, I myself uh, learned Sino-Korean numerals pretty easily, but I had to practice native Korean numerals for a few weeks before I even got it right um, because at, in the beginning it might be a bit similar to one another, it might be a bit confusing and for people who know Chinese numerals, Sino-Korean numbers might be um, a bit easier. Um, if you have heard um, Chinese numerals like uh if you're going for one to three you have probably heard e or san uh, pretty commonly maybe in youtube videos or something or if you have learned it like that so when you see sign of korean numerals you can see that it's a bit similar to the pronunciation of e or san and the numbers after that so First of all, if you know 1 to 10 very well, you could pretty much build most other numbers from just that. It's like 1 to 10 is a building blocks of everything. So 1 is A, the next one E, then Sam, Sa, O, Yu, Che, Par, Gu, Ship. So these are the building blocks of uh, all the numbers that we are going to see from right now. So uh, to say numbers like um, just the teen numbers, that is 11 to 19, how to say those numbers? To say those numbers, uh, you already know that they are like in tens, right? So what you would do is, you would first write 
you would first write 10 and then if it is 11 you would add 10 plus 1 if it is 13 10 plus 3 if it is 15 10 plus 5 like that it will go so it would be 11 shibe 12 shibi then ship some shibo ship you ship chi ship pai ship sa ship gu like that so that is pretty much easy and then when you go to 20 30 40 all those numbers uh, when you think about it that is also in a way intense so suppose you take 20 what you do there is that 20 in a way is 2 plus 10 so you just write it like that you write it uh, you write 2 and then you write 10 so 2 is e and 10 is ship so 20 is e ship like that some ship sa ship o ship yuk ship chi ship pai ship gu ship comes just like that and if you want to say um, numbers like 21 what would you do same as before you would have 2 plus 10 of course to say the 20 part of it and then 21 we need that one there so you just add a one also there so it would become ishibe like that samshibe samshibi samshipsa oshibe yukshibe chishibe sashib pai sashib gu like that any number would work like that so the next would be 100 so how to say 100 100 is peg it is written here peg so how to say 200 200 once again is 2 plus 100 so you just say literally 2 and 100 there so it would become yi beg like that sam beg sa beg o beg chi beg pai beg gu beg that is how it would go and once again if you want to say something like 122 you or 222 two, two, 222 you can just say e big e ship e it's literally e e e e big e ship e like that e big e ship sum e big e ship sa e big e ship wo any number you could make any number like that so the next one we have is thousand. How would you say thousand? Thousand is ton. So ton also, if you're gonna say three thousand, suppose you could just say three plus thousand, and that would be sam ton, sa ton, o o gu ton. Like that, you can say literally anything. The next one is ten thousand. 10,000 from here onwards, there are small uh, changes. So, 10,000 is man. You wouldn't say 10 plus 1,000. Ship chan is wrong. So, it is man. 10,000 is man. So, this will also, it would go iman, samman, oman, guman. It would come like that. And you could make literally any number from that. And the next is like if you have hundred thousand, that would be shimma. So you have man, and hundred thousand would be shimma or one lakh for that case. If you are going for the Indian number system, it would be one lakh. And uh, the next would be a million or ten lakhs. If it is a million or ten lakhs, it would be Peng Man. Okay? So, now we have the next set. So, if it is ten million or one crore, it would be Chom Man. The next one, if you have like... Uh, it is not like you would just say man man. Man man is wrong. It is ok. The next would be ok. And then when you are adding uh, a 10 to that ok, it would become shibok like that. Begok, chonok, cho. 
100억, 1000억, 조. So if you see here in Korean, numbers obtain a new na name with every four zeros. Um, many of us may not be used to that because even now after almost six to seven years of learning the language, I'm not quite used to the numbers changing um, at uh, like four zeros because I am more used to the metric system and Indian numbering system. I mean, at school, it was hard for me to even get used to the metric system because I was too used to the Indian number system. So it might be possible that uh, you are having a hard time with it, and that's absolutely okay. You can just be acclimatized with uh, man and shimman, up until that, at least, it would be better if you could get used to because up uh, until that, uh, the numbers, you can hear them pretty common, uh, either if it is counting or time or currency, whatever like that. Till Shimman, I would advise you to um, know how the numbers work. Once that is done, you could just uh, get used to it over time. So, and in English, um, if you're seeing the metric system, you would see that the name of the numbers changed by three zeros. And uh, those who acclimatize to the Indian number system, you could see that num the name of the numbers changed by two zeros. So it's a whole different level, or you could say it is a whole different world. So having it a bit hard might be possible, and that's absolutely okay. Just take your time, get used to it, uh, see some dramas or something like that. So you get to hear millions and ten millions and billions all the time because you can hear like money transactions uh, on all on those huge amounts from time to time in dramas and Korean raw manwas, if possible. Uh, you could also try that. That's also a good option. I still read them and they help me practice the language because I don't have anyone to speak and practice in Korean nearby me. So I hope you get what was taught in today's lesson. Um, and you could ask, like, you have a lot of numbers given here and the Korean forms of those numbers. You could try having, like, your own numbers and translating them into Korean. Um, and you can put them in the comment box so that I can check through all those. So in the next class, we'll be learning how to say the time, date... Um, yeah, things like that and we'll be going into the details. Before that, we also need to study the native Korean numbers because since native Korean numbers also come into the time factor, we probably need to go into that before the uh, dates and time and all that. So I hope today's lesson was clear. If it is not, Put all your doubts in the comment box. I'll be attending to them. Please don't send uh, personal messages uh, for doubts if possible. Because if you put a doubt in the comment box, that's also going to help me. And many other people who are coming to watch the video. Um, because people are learning from you too. And you're building a community where you can communicate as Korean language learners with one another so let's celebrate that fact and always thanks for your viewership subscription and continuously following my channel for that case so thank you everyone um see you in the next class